I'll start this uh, exercise or training by using this file here. Uh, IGS file. So to import this file, we go to Simulcom and import or as well file, create a new file and select the IGS. If you cannot see this list over here, make sure you choose the correct uh, file extension. So make sure you choose uh, IGS and choose the file. And over here is the advanced parameters. Advanced parameters. Uh, the name explained by itself. So uh, sometimes if you import IGS file and find that a lot of surface is missing, you can all actually come and uh, over here to change some options to uh, it will help you to get a better surface uh, data input and that's a one parameter but most of the time we don't touch it and just okay to import the part and this is the model that uh, we we are going to use okay sometimes your system uh, might be the NC solution only system this means that you cannot uh, Open the part of humans by NC solution system. And how to load the model into NC? Yeah, you have to do like this. You have to create, click on the new, choose a NC, make sure MM, then click OK. Then create a new NC document. After that, Select this option here, load model, and go and select your model. My model will be in uh, training, in D drive, and training. There you are. This is the model. Then select. And by default, again, it will uh, use us. Uh, model UCS as a default. You can also change the UCS if you want with this option here. Sometimes you might need to do it, uh, especially if you are loading uh, an, uh, an electrode into the NC documents. You need to change the UCS, the reference UCS. And I'm going to click OK. This is how you uh, move or load the part into the NC documents. After you load, uh, make sure you save the part and I will put into 001 NC doc. Save. Now what you see on the screen is the CAM mode. It means the you can you can see all the NC function display here. If you want to go to CAP mode, you can click this icon here to go to CAP mode. Then the NC function will automatically hide away and you will show only the CAP functions. And of course you can switch back to CAM if you want. Okay? It just on and off the functions. Let's go to the cat mode. Now I'm going to show you a, a function here. Analyze uh, direction analysis. What you do need to do is select everything and press the middle button of the mouse to select to accept your selections. And this is a dialog you can see here. Uh, the color link. So you, you move the mouse like for example purple color is 90 degree. Uh, flat is green. Zero degree, and of course, a red. If you see some areas red, that means that area is undercut, and we know that this area is not undercut. So, 
some mistake is is happening here so let's cancel exit okay why this happens let's again I'll go to uh, I will display all the open edge to display the open edge plus middle and right button of the mouse together and select open edge you can see the blue color is the open edge this means the surface is not stitched together and uh, that means this part is not a closed solid Okay, sometimes when you import surface data, this is a uh, problem. Uh, the problem of surface normal is very common. So I'm going to off the open edge display again. I'm going to use this analyze to select the object direction to check the normal direction of the surface. So you can see here, if if the face showing white color, that means uh, the face uh, have the correct directions okay the surface must always uh, point surface normal must point outside of the model okay so in this case you can see the cavity per se is cavity surface the normal direction already point inside so it become that's why it gives you a inaccurate uh, analysis of the angle and to solve this, just click on the change, let's change the auto and select this face and flip it and then I'll select all the face and click apply. Right. So now all face uh, become white color, that means all the surface normal is now pointing outside of the path. Now, I'm going to check the direction analysis again. You can see now, the cavity face now is showing the accurate uh, data for the angle. So, for this part, there's no undercut, except the bottom face, of course. Right? Next, I'm going to show you how to uh, use this function here, curvature map. Again, I'll select all the face, press middle buttons. So this curvature range and um, color, all you can change. So it will show you uh, from here, you know, just move the mouse, you know uh, which area is uh, radius. What radius? For example, here is 8, and from here you can roughly know the radius over here. Right? It is the two, roughly R2.4. So this will help you to decide uh, what cutter to use to machine this part. Now look, look, let's look at the measuring functions, uh, go analyze, measurements, or you can straight away select this icon here. So over here you have a few options, if you're interest, interested uh, to check uh, distance between two points, or two lines, or between two surfaces, or between a point or surface, you use this icon here, then you can select two points, okay? or two surface or two line or line to surface anything and the second one is the angles so what you need is to select uh, two lines or two surface you give the angle reading and the third one is the radius you just select this uh, face here and you must make sure the arrow is pointing uh, toward towards the center of the radius and you give you uh, the curvature is roughly 8 mm okay the third one the third one you can if you select a face you can give you an area 
you just select all let's, let's select all again then it will give you a summary of the part volumes for example you, you can also calculate the clamping force by keeping this uh, injection pressure over here Now let's look at this uh, here, this pane, this window. This is the feature tree. Everything that you do, you, it will be recorded under here. And next, that uh, next thing that I'm going to explain about is the set. Set is something like a um, layer, something like a layer in a uh, other software. In Simulcom, we call it set. Right. So let's say sometimes it is good to create a, a few a few layer or a few sets for the model uh, for the selection purpose. For example, now let's say I'm going to create a new set, and this set I can uh, I call it KB face KB face SRS surface. Okay. Every survey. And you can choose by selection, I mean you can pick one by one, okay, if you want. Um, but uh, what I need now is, is uh, I want to select all this blue color surface and become my uh, cavity surface set. So I can choose this option here uh, by using a criteria. Under criteria, I have the option to choose by colors or by entity types, colors, types, or again sets, line style, things like that. So in this case, I'm going to choose this color. If you don't know what color is this, this uh, surface here, you can always go and select this uh, function with a pen, okay, to pick this to get this color. So now the active, the current color it will be this color. So I will choose this current color and click OK. Right? You can see here I just created a set. Okay, for all of this color. Okay, so next I'm going to create. A, for example, I will change this to face here to maybe yellow uh, because this is the uh, uh, flat face. Maybe I change this to light green. For some light green, so this is a flat face. So I'm going to create another set again for the flat face. Flat face. And change my criteria. And I'll, I'll choose from this color here. And OK. Sorry. This is a flat face. Okay. So the unique thing about this uh, selection by criteria is if I want to change this face also into a, into the uh, make this face into this set, the flat face set. Uh, what I need is to change this color, and the automatic will belong to the flat face set. Okay, so now I'm going to maybe this this one, this all of this face again. Maybe I'm going to change this to another color. This color, for example, that means in NC we're not going to use this face for calculations. We can separate it out. In Simulton, you can you can select that this surface also if you want. So. 
I'm going to uh, use this option here to make this color color and I'm going to create another set again. Maybe this one uh, non cut face, non cut face. And I will choose the by criteria and I'm using this color and color here. So now I have a non cut face all at this set. Next, I'm going to create another use this color here. I will create another set for all the popping surface. New set. Face. Again, I can use the criteria also. Choose the color. This color and OK. So there you are. In Simaton, it's easy for you to use a color and a set to control the surface that you want the machine. You can uh, loop it according to what you want. Now we're going to create a Dentum UCS as a machine uh, coordinate systems, and you can see now uh, the default UCS is at uh, at the bottom center of the path. Okay, so I'm going to create create at the top center of the path. How to do it? Go to Dentums UCS. I'm going to choose center of geometry. I just choose all the surface that is involved. Then immediately you can see some blue points that you can choose. So I'm going to click on this blue point here. This blue point. Right? This is the top center of the part. Sometimes you might need to uh, move up a little bit for the UCS. You can use this option here. Optional. You can uh, again you can rotate if you want. Let's say uh, rotate 45. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna rotate. Let's put this low. This is for you to key in delta so you can move up by Z. In this case I just move up one mm then click OK. To create this UCS, and this UCS, you can change the name of the UCS by select, picking the UCS, right click, then select renames. So I'm going to say this is my GIF for my setup UCS. Okay. So now current active UCS that is red color is the model. So if you want to change this UCS to active, select this UCS, right click and select activate UCS. And the UCS will become red color. Okay. So and also sometimes you can see on the screen you have many UCS and you want to hide some of the UCS, you can use this uh, filter UCS. You can show all the UCS and height from here so now what you see only the G54 So after we have the G54 UCS and make it active, we are ready to machine the part. Uh, we go to go back to the cam mode, and over here again the cam mode. If you just now if you forgot to activate your G54 uh, 
UCS, you can always come here and choose, right? So make sure over here display is G before. This means that uh, UCS that you are using now to machine this part is G before. And to start the uh, machining, we have to create a two path a folder. Click on this. And the name it will follow the UCS TPG before you can change it into your own name and type the number axis. Uh, you can choose uh, 2.5, 3.4, or 5. Yeah, but most of the machines start from 3 axis, so don't choose a 2.5 axis unless your machine cannot move X, Y, Z together. So choose 3 axis. You have option here micro milling. Micro milling is uh, this option is for machining a part, very small part. Uh, if you are going to machine some parts with very small cutters, small parts with small cutter, like for example uh, less than 0.1 mm or 0.2 mm, something like that, and you, the tolerance that you need is below 1 micron, then you own this. If not, don't use this. And this is the UCS for this TP. Okay. And starting point, the XY starting point, X0, Y0, so uh, Z50. This is the film plane, you can see the blue, blue plane. If I increase, it will follow increase. So I'm going to put 50. Normally, you, the Z clearance, uh, you put the highest. It means this this height it must be higher than all of your jig and fixtures. Okay. Starting point x0 y0. This means that before the tool will start, the tool will come to this location to start. That's that's a starting point. Most of the time x0 y0 is okay unless you want to change it. You can also use this arrow here. To select some locations for some this location to change the start point if you want. So in this case, let's change back to zero, and this is fifty. Command is this is the command, and you can type anything that you want. I can always say train something like this, and OK. So after you click OK, you can see a folder over here. By by the way, if you if your NC process manager is different from mine, uh, no need to be afraid. You can switch it if you want. Uh, what I'm using now is a simple one, the Wizard mode. If you like the uh, uh, advanced mode, you can click this icon here to go to advanced mode. Okay, this icon is for wizard mode. For me, I like to use the wizard mode. Okay, now the next thing that you need to do is to create a part. This is the part. So, by default, uh, you select all the surface, all the surface uh, as your part. So, I'm going to choose OK. The part is used to tell the marker what you're cutting. After you create a part, next is to create a stock. I'm going to tell Simaton what is my initial stock. So I can use this click this icon here. And here we have a few options. Okay. We have a surface. Sometimes you have some uh, casting parts. Then you choose a surface to select the 
uh, some object to become your stock. In this case, I I'm going to use a bounding box, and immediate, immediately it will calculate the box out of my geometry. Okay, and now you can see here I want my z here, the highest point, to be zero. So I will change to box and set my changes to zero. So that on the top I have one mm material remain. You can see here. After I put in zero, then I start from zero. And this is the stock. You can change the color if you want. I'm going to change this color and click OK. So the stock is to tell Simulton what is the shape of the stock that you're cutting. And Simulton will use this stock to automatic update after uh, each process to give you the remaining stock. So now we're going to create our uh, first wrapping cutters. Just click on the cutters and over here this is new cutters you can edit this or or you can delete the default and create a new one so I'm going to create a rough blue note cutter and new maybe um, diameter 32 for example and R6 so in this case I choose of course me link here and how about the I will choose blue bull bull notes and magazine the two number and the diameter of so the two is 32 the corner radius 6 Okay, and the cut length, the cutting length of this, because this is a round insert too, so I want to change this to 12. Okay, and the clearance. Clearance, uh, let's say uh, I will specify as uh, about uh, 3 times. 30, 36, 36. Okay, this height. And of course, uh, over here you have an option to specify the shank. Okay, so in this case, uh, I will specify maybe the bottom diameter of the shank will be maybe 32. The top diameter maybe. Uh, 40 or 38. Let's put 38 and cone height, the height of the cone. Let's put it maybe uh, 30. Okay, and this is uh, our cutter now, the shape of the cutters. So you, you can have, uh, have the option whether to create the the shank or not. So the free height I'll put it for number. Okay. This is a shank. You can if you're two you have shank you can clean it over here. And how about the holders? Uh, to create holders you need to click on this. And this if you have some holders over here or from the library you can get it from here. If you don't have you can always click here. A new holders and you can key the names of holders. Let's say I put uh, uh, holders in diameters, and you can change different uh, types of holders if you want. So 
So maybe I'll change back to the maybe this one. The bottom diameter, this one. Uh, let's put maybe 70. The top diameter 18. The cone height maybe about 10. About the total height of the holder, mm, I put maybe 60. Okay, so this is a tool. So if this is okay, you just click OK, and then you can also display it on the model by clicking any point on the model to check whether this tool is uh, good for you or not. So it seems okay. So I'm gonna close this. Now we're gonna create the first cutting process. Uh, I'm gonna create uh, this uh, first roughing process under the stop process. So you must select this stop here. Make sure it is highlighted. Then you can create. Click the procedure. From main selection, make sure you select volume milling. That is for roughing. Uh, from the sub selection, we will use the rough spiral, the spiral cutting strategy for this roughing. And over here, you have a few tab pages. A few tab pages that you must fulfill to, before you can create the process. Now, the first one is what? The first one is geometry. And since we're going to cut everything, uh, we are not going to select the boundary. We will ask the system to cut everything. And how about the part surface? Part surface group, we can uh, set a few groups. I can set, for example, maybe I'm going to set uh, three groups. Yeah, one group for the cavity face, one group for the uh, flat face, and another group for the parting face, for example. So let's say. I will choose this button face. Uh, part face, part of it one, I will going to choose that carry face. Right click. And I'm going to use the uh, select surface by here. Right click. Okay. I'm not going to use select it manually. So I can use a set that we have uh, just now prepared. I'm going to choose this carry face set. And click OK. So immediate, immediately all the cavity phase is automatically selected. And how about the second one? So I'm going to use this one, second one again, select by cut here. I will choose the, all the parting phase. And maybe the third one, I will select all the flat phase. Flat phase. The advantage of selecting uh, uh, three different surface group is uh, is that you can key in different surface offset. For example, you can see here you can key in three different surface offset for different uh, surface group. For example, sometimes on the flat area, uh, the amount of offset you might want to put it into a minimum. For example. Uh, let's go back to this geometry selections. So after you select uh, all the surface that you want to machine, next of course you select the cutter that you want to use. This will be the cutter, the first laughing cutter. Click OK. And then sometimes you may not know uh, how long should you clamp the cutter, for example. Okay, in that case, you can always 
use the preview option here. Estimate minimum clear length. This guy calculate and imme immediately smart will let you know. Okay, for this cutter, you need the clear length of 51.22. So then I'll click OK. And go back to the procedure wizard. And I'm going to choose this option to temporarily go out, save column setting, and close it. Okay, to go out so that I can uh, go to my cutter to do some changes. So, minimum clear, yeah, I've done some mistake here. Normally, this is not so uh, low. So minimum uh, clear that we need is actually more than 51. So in this case, I'll put maybe how about 60. Okay. Then click OK. Then yes. Okay. So this is how we uh, check the minimum clear length and go and. After that, go and update your clear. Now let's continue to edit this process, get back to this process, double click this process. And next, we will look at the motion parameters. So, I'm going to look at, for example, the two trajectory. So, over here, we can fix uh, the vertical step. For example, now it's 12 mm, and the side step. Is is forty percent of the cutters, and I can use this preview option here to preview and to check my remaining stock without uh, calculating. So this is the twelve mm down step remaining stock of the twelve mm, and you can see the step is very big. So I'm going to go back the procedure and maybe I'll change this to uh, maybe I'll choose to um, uh, 60% or 30% shift time CRRD okay thirty percent of the two corner radius CRD. CRD is the uh, variables for the two corner radius. So you can go and look at here. You can see here corner radius is CRD. If you cannot see these short names, you just right click on the screen. Make sure you uh, check these short names. So if I cancel it, you cannot see. It. If I right click and show short name, then you can see the variables name for this value here 6 ok so in this case I've changed 30% of CRV it will be 1.8 and then I can go again preview again let's preview to see the remaining stock and you can see now the vertical step become very small so this is very uh, unique in Simatons. Okay, in Simaton we can preview the final result before you do any calculations. This is a good point. And beside this, you can also have the excess material that can, uh, yeah, there's now a lot of excess. This basically show you the big chunk material. Where is the big chunk material left? Okay, let's go back to here. So for the vertical step, 
we will use 30% on the corner radius. The side step is the pitching of the roughing. So most most of the time the uh, 40% is good for the good enough. Uh, you can put uh, more than 40% if you want. Uh, my suggestion is not more than 70% of the two diameter. TLDI is the variable for the two diameter. You look at here, two diameters, right? TLDI. So after I change this two value, let's ignore other parameters for now. I just change this two. And if this is okay, you can go and calculate. So I'm going to click this option here, save and calculate. And from Simaton E10, the calculations is done uh, at the background. Done at the background. If you have a super box, and the super box will help you to calculate this task, and it will not jam up all your CPU of your computers, right? That means uh, during the calculation, you still can uh, double click and okay, look at the parameter that is set, things like that. Okay, this is the result after the calculations. Now, after calculation, you can see. Uh, the blue line is actually the uh, where the tool will cut. The cyan color line, this one, uh, is the approach, and the red it will be the rapid. It will be the rapid. Okay. So I'm gonna use show you how to use the navigator to check the motions, the cutter motions. Uh, just you, what you need to do is just select this process and right click and select navigator this is the navigator page all the colors uh, for the uh, for the feed for the max feed and for the rapid you can change for the, I now I'm going to change for the max feed maybe change to the uh, purple color okay what is max fit? max fit it means this motion this line the purple color line you can change it you have an option to change it to G01 or G02 uh, G01 or G00 okay we're going to touch on this later on so the coloring you can change and also the display you can uh, on and off the display for example I can off it right and then I can play block by block or you can play by this uh, uh, icon here you can in increase the speed the speed and from here you can see how the cutter move and how the cutter move right and uh, if you don't like to uh, see block by block you can always go for layer by layer options then you can display the cutting motions layer by layer Okay, and from this animations, uh, of course, you can also click in the motions. Okay, to make the tool to go to that positions like that. Yeah. So now, as you can check, let as we check layer by layer, you can see after the two machining after the blue line, the two always jump up to. Uh, 50 mm always jump up to a height of 50 mm absolute always jump to 50 mm 
sometimes this might be too high and it costs a lot of cycle times. So how to optimize this? So I'm going to exit the navigator. Now I will go and edit this process and go to the motion parameters and I'll close the two trajectory. Let's look at the clearance. This option here is is to control the clearance. Use clearance. Make sure you check this one all the time. If this is checked, that means after two machines, the two will retract to the, to the clearance. If you don't check, the two will stay on the work base. So make sure always is checked unless you know what you are you are doing and um, now the clearance plane I'm setting is 50 mm and the absolute jack the internal clearance I'm using absolute and my value also is 50 that is why all the jumping all jump to 50 so I can say change instead of key value I can always do like this I can keep max pz plus 50. Max pz means means uh, the maximum part height plus another 50. If you're interested to to key the minimum part height, you just type in mean pz like that. Right? Mean pz is for minimum. Max is for maximum. Right. Then it will be a roughly 49. And absolute clear because is using the clear short names here, the variables for, for the clearance. So the value is, is uh, 49. So in this case, to reduce the jumping, I can always ask 2 to go up, maybe max pz plus 10 mm. And it is roughly 9. Then let's execute. Now let's check the result. Do you see? Uh, let's confirm you. This is the starting and this is the ending. Let's go to a uh, navigator. The two is starting from fifty, and at the middle, if if there's a jumping, it will jump only to. 9 mm start from 49 sorry and if there's a internal jumping all jump to 9 and the last you will, you will retract to the 50 mm height this is called absolute z okay Now, what happens if you want to uh, optimize the clear so that the clear uh, will only jump a little bit if possible and save uh, more cycle time from the jumping? You can do that. Let's edit this, double click this process and go to motion parameters and motion parameters. What you have to do is to change this one, internet clearance, change it to optimized clearance. Optimized clearance. And uh, I, I will advise you to put the additional safety jack. Okay, if you put zero, maybe uh, this distance becomes zero. This distance becomes zero. When the two uh, move over, it will touch the work case sometimes due to some plus minus issue so if you can additional safe jack this is incremental value so you can key one or two okay is it will be okay that means if you key two that means the distance between the part and the jumping it will be around two minimum is two and it will be uh, safe so after I 
changes. Let's calculate. And during the calculation, you want to see the progress. You can click on this icon here, and it show you how how many percent already done. Okay, and the the exit you can click exit to exit the monitor now you can see the jumping is optimized and uh, I'm gonna maybe gator is maybe gator to check it maybe uh, layer by layer you can see the jumping is no more absolute okay so some area you only jump a little bit and some area okay you will jump this this one is higher because uh, along the path you have a uh, one island here and the two will move across with a gap of additional 2 mm okay this 2 mm for safety the, this is the additional distance And I'm going to change color of the max fit to purple color. Okay. The red line is uh, G00. This red line is G00. And you cannot change this. But the purple line, this line, you can change it. Okay. You have the option to change it to uh, G00 or G01. Okay. Why we need to change this uh, purple color line, the max fit line to G01? Let me explain. Look at this chart here. Let's say now I'm going to move from point 1 to point 2. And uh, my G code is G01, X300, Y200, with a free rate maybe 100 or 1000, it doesn't matter. So, how the machine will move, how the cutter will move, of course, the cutter will move in a straight line. It will move in a straight line like this, from point 1 to point 2. But if I change the code, Instead of uh, G01, if I put Z00, what happened? Uh, let's change the red, G00. Okay. Instead of uh, G, G1, I change G00. What happened? When machine read G00, that means the machine knows that uh, most of the machine will move X and Y the motor okay X and Y direction at the same uh, speed that is the maximum speed right so this is what happened so if X and Y moving at the same speed so from point 1 they will reach 200 to 200 first until this point so after Y already reached 200, it will stop moving and then X still have another 100 to go. So it will, from here, it will move like this. That means on the machine, if your machine read this code, your machine cannot move at a straight line like the black one. So it will move like the red lines like this. So this is dangerous. if somehow somewhere over here you have you have some parts okay some islands over here if you have some very high islands over here or some pictures over here is dangerous and if your tool is moved below the uh, this this height it will knock the cutter Okay, 
So do this to solve this problem of course use a G01. Okay? To solve this problem. For example, the motion over here. Okay. So how to change the max fit? Uh, if you want to change the color of the line, you can see that when I exit from navigator, the max fit line, the color change back to red. If you want to permanent change it, you click on the global filter. Over here, you can change it. Let's say I'm going to permanently change this one to a purple color. Mm, how about this? Right? And um, okay, so how to change the purple color line from rapid into the feed max feed? You just double click this process. What you have to do is you go to this option here, machine parameters, and over this option, air motions. Okay. So if you use rapid, the max fit will be G00. Okay, if you want to change it to fit, change to max fit. And in this case, you can put a fee rate uh, 15,000, 10,000, it doesn't matter. If the machine cannot move that fast, uh, it is okay, it doesn't matter. No alarm. Maybe I keep 10,000. Okay. So with these parameters, I can change all the purple color line to G1. And this will avoid this kind of collision happens. And this kind of uh, collisions, you cannot uh, see inside the simulator. Okay? It only happens on the machines, not the simulators. So if you change to this parameter, so it will make the uh, uh, programming become very safe. Okay, especially if you use the optimized clearance.